Welcome to Sovereign's Hill, Balarat. Sekitar satu jam setengah dari Melbourne. Men, women, large family with the children all crying. Madam Mary Dure. Ocean horses. Ini di Gintur nih sebelas tiga puluh tapi. All I'm doing here is using the anvil and the hammer to bend a scroll. So I've taken that taper that you saw me do before and just using quite gentle glancing blows off the metal just to make a nice decorative scroll. A couple of things happen obviously. I heat the metal up 
That makes it softer and more malleable and easier to work with. Then the metal comes out a certain colour, depending on how hot it is. And then I hit it with a hammer, it obviously changes shape. And then it slowly cools down and changes colour once again. So once it reaches this dull red colour, you see there, time to put it back in the forge and give it another heat. So, heating metal up makes it malleable, allows us to do our job. But, does anybody in the audience know what, you guys know what etymology is? Study of words and their origins, yep. So that's where words come from. Um, do you guys know what a compound word is? We take two different words, smush them together to make a new word. Blacksmith is made up of black and smith to make my trade title. But, you pull them apart and look at them individually. You might have heard, actually you might have even seen, there's a tin smith up the street. Uh, there's gold smiths, there's silver smiths. You can probably guess what metals they work with. A blacksmith, however, works with a black metal known as iron. When you dig iron ore out of the ground and refine it by smelting it into pig iron, it's black in colour. But then by adding different things to it, 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 is, it, it changes the molecular structure of metals uh, and also the colour as well. So it's that sort of silvery grey colour you see here now. But iron, sorry, black just means iron, essentially. The word smith itself comes from the word smite, which means to hit or strike. Blacksmith means iron hitter. And it makes a lot of sense when you see his work, doesn't it? Because when you hit iron, you change the shape of stuff. Now, it's a fairly nice looking scroll. Letter for letter identical to the original Dilger's blacksmith that was here in Sebastopol, Ballarat during the 1850s. I say letter for letter the same because there's a massive spelling error on the front. And you can read it, well, good for you. If you can't, then you share something in common with the original sign writing. So I can bend it back onto itself. And that creates this lovely looking treble clefty sort of thing here. Anyway, uh, there we go. So then we've got the decorative part. Now, the couple that used to live here was, of course, Mr. and Mrs. Linton. Now, 
When they first arrived here, they didn't have a lot of money. They did, however, have a wealth of knowledge. And so, when they first arrived here, they were able to create this first gable that you can see here. Now, of course, this does look quite rough. They did it with their bare hands. They planed it all themselves. That wood would have been very hard for them to come by as well. It would have taken quite some time. But as that they were making this and making their house a home, they were also making their garden to uh, pay for, of course, this is an additional charge, to pay for a nightman to come of an evening to empty your outhouse. Of course, open up this back flap here. Don't worry, this house has been vacant for quite some time. And here we grab out this bucket, as you can see here, and then he would put it in his big black night cart, which we do have on display. Now, this cottage is up for sale because unfortunately Mr. Wayne has passed away and uh, his brother, uh, Mrs. Wayne's brother-in-law, has decided that he does not want to keep it anymore and doesn't want, doesn't want to keep paying for it. So unfortunately they've had to sell. But Mrs. Wayne, of course, made this house an absolute home and loves it to bits. So of course we'll need to be respectful of her if she is in today. So please follow me this way. have a look at this beautiful room as you can see we've got the finest wallpaper on the walls mm -hmm. for, I would say a uh, family of a nice wash got a washcloth here and some tello soap made of animal fat uh, quite a lovely uh, scent that I think I believe is A butter turner, uh, you've got the finest in, in uh, China as well. So, honestly, I, I do recommend this house, it is quite fantastic. But we're not quite done yet, we're going to head into the backyard now. So Sovereign Hill uses this building today uh, as a home for our, uh, our pet cat, uh, Fergus. He lives in here. You may see him wandering about, although he's a bit temperamental, so he may not be, he may be avoiding. In the town of, township of Ballarat, he was actually a botanist in the old country. And so you can actually see around here, he's got some lovely plants. He had a choice here. Uh, for, for Ballarat, I'm afraid. But um, Mr. and Mrs. Chambers, unfortunately, are not quite as uh, well off as the last two homes. So please don't get your hopes up this small for a year. Of course, we have uh, the dining, uh, parlor, bathing, kitchen, everything sort of in one here. Uh, so this is, of course, where everything would happen. And then everything uh, else, so your sleep arrangements and your... your uh, your getting ready station, as we saw in Mrs. Wayne's cottage as well, would be happening in here. Now, this would be a great home for uh, a young family, I would imagine. So, uh, possibly a mother and a father, and maybe even a teenager uh, sleeping. On
Australia's burning. Now, um, please follow me. We're going to head on to the wonderful green colour um, in all of her paints and her wallpaper. This is quite in style, ladies and gentlemen. stage compressor, the compressor part is at the right hand end here in front of me and the, uh, the left hand end is the steam engine part and you can see it's got a governor on it so you set the, gov the governor to whatever speed you want the machine to run at and it will then govern the speed so the way it works is that uh, if the machine is going too fast, the balls will fly up. And there's a butterfly valve in this.
and it went to a tin mine up near Romeo. The tin only lasted a year and uh, they converted it to gold and it arrived here in Ballarat in, the, in, in about 1970. Um, so it's, it's quite old, it's basically worn out and we're rebuilding it. So those S-shaped cams there are, are not in the position they should be. But it's called a battery because a battery is, is a row of things. And uh, the battery in your car is a row of six cells. You've heard them talk about battery of guns. So that's what a battery is, it's a row of things. And this is a row of crushing heads. So each battery is a mortar box. The battery crushes the rock down to uh, how many gills? Any? No, 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 definitely not. Like Kevin no. Costner, no. <laughs> no. So behind you here we've got a shaft and we've got one single shaft and it's divided into four separate compartments. The leftmost compartment.
salah loh. Sovereign's Hill Ballarat About one and a half hour From Melbourne Victoria Australia Post office is the original one. This one. Yeah. 